Hello there. What's going on, everyone? Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Citadel contrast paints, but specifically the primer, the Wraith Bone Primer. This is specifically a contrast undercoat, and I have applied it to a whole bunch of uh, minis from Joan of Arc. Uh, if you saw my last contrast video, you'll see that uh, I kind of did a couple of contrast paints with a Tamiya white primer, which is very, very, very bright. And, uh, you know, and I, and I basically did some of the same colors that I kind of tested. I'm going to retest with the, uh, with the Wraith Bone undercoat and see what kind of difference that makes. But uh, also, you know, I finished the Dragon. Now, this is a combination of mostly contour paints, but um, a couple of other, uh, you know, blending, like contour paint over contour paint, like several layers and stuff. And so the Dragon came out pretty fun. I uh, did some 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 fun stuff with that, but we're gonna try and do some regular minis now and like kind of compare them a little bit to the effects that we have over here. And I also picked up some extra colors too. We got like a green now and some wood and and stuff like that. So we'll take a look at a couple more different contrast paints with the Wraith Bone set contrast undercoat. So the first one I'm gonna try out is the Apothecary White, and uh, it gave me this kind of tone here before, kind of very statuesque. Uh, some people said, oh, well, that's because you reused the brush in your last video, and well, I pulled a clean brush uh, last video. It was just, uh, you know, it had been previously used like a month ago, but it wasn't like I had just finished using it. Um, but we'll see how this looks uh, here. I've got a fresh brush, and... There we go. And I'm gonna I just kind of get the whole thing because I don't really want, um, I could probably use a thicker brush to be honest. I don't really want to individually paint all of these because there are really hundreds of miniatures in this line for this game. And uh, I just don't know if I really have the time for that. I'm also not sure how well white is gonna kind of project itself over this kind of bone color. Maybe I'll leave this one half and half for right now. We'll let this one dry, but that's a kind of a good way to kind of see. I kind of like that. I'm gonna put this one on extra thick though. No, actually, I don't need to do half and half. I have another horse. I can. I don't need to do every one of them. I'll do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. Let's do the whole thing. And I think that's one thing I think is cool about this line is if you do have minis, you want to, you know, you want painted and you want those the details kind of brought out, but don't want to have to paint them too much it's, it just gives you some really quick quick options like this isn't stuff I would do for like a mini that I really wanted to spend my time on but it's you know something that you can do for like I could see maybe like zombie side if you can getting like a zombie side stuff you want to do all your zombies of a specific type of specific color all right so we're gonna let that one dry but that is definitely having kind of a gray look to it right now I don't know how they consider this white because like in the, the 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 things I saw originally made this look white and blue, and that's certainly the colors I had advertised for it. But it doesn't look white and blue to me. And now in comparing this to to this guy, we'll see how it looks after he dries. I guess that's probably more fair. All right. Next up, we're gonna go with uh, Magos Purple on one of these little demons. And uh, Magos Purple was kind of the base color I used for the dragon that I ended up, it ended up coming out very pink for me with the white base. And just to see how white the white was, it's kind of like that on that wing. And uh, so we can see the difference between how the, the, the bone is gonna look compared to the other, uh, you know. So we'll see how it looks when we compare. So it looks like it's gonna be a little darker right off the bat, right away. Let's keep going.
and I'm not watering this down at all. I've heard stories of people watering their paints down and not having good luck. Uh, I mean, you, it's a general, it's a, it's normally a good rule to water down your paints, but for, for these contrast paints, I think you just want to apply them really, really, really thick. Uh, I mean, just straight up, because they're already watered down, like, so much. They're, they're so watery as is. I think you want to do them as, as, as wet as, as possible, because that's the kind of the, I think the purpose, I think that's the whole point is to make them super, super watered down. So this way they pool and, you know, they pool in just the right areas and you really get, that's how you get the contrast. One thing I noticed with these little minis, I'm doing really tiny minis here, but um, it's hard to hold the base. I'm going to end up getting some paint on my hands, I'm sure of it. Oh, well, I'm not super worried about it. That's the thing. These are just, oh, I'm not 100% super worried about these. All right, looks pretty good. And compared to here, uh, I, I mean, it's it's hard to say because it's not dried yet, so we'll let's let it dry. All right, next up, we're using this Athermatic Blue. This has been one of my least favorite ones, although, granted, it does look pretty cool on this guy, um, at least as a start, but I thought it like looked better for it, like make him, makes him look like a ghost more than it makes him look kind of menacing. So I've got these kind of knights that are engulfed in some kind of ghostly flame. So I figured they might be appropriate for this paint and well, go ahead and put it on here and see if we notice a difference in this effect. Oh, and this is a real small one. So it's going on real quick. I do, I will say that initially it's, uh, it looks better than I think it looked on the, uh, on the white, because this one is kind of a lighter color, and you really will see the white just power through if you go in with like a Tamiya white, which is like the whitest thing, I've, whitest primer I can think of. Looks actually, looks pretty cool right there. I think that was kind of more the desired effect. So I think this had an improvement here. But again, we will have to wait and see until after it dries. But you can kind of see a lot of the white kind of shining through there. Kind of the same color as that the base was. All right, next up we're going to do the Talisar Blue. One of my favorites. Uh, looks really, really good on the bright white. This was our guy from Talisar Blue with the Matamia White. And we're going to try him on this dude. And, and this is this, this undercoat is very powdery, by the way. You see how it looks on this little axe wielding uh, individual. It's very powdery. And uh, we'll see what kind of a. Oh, and I just got some on the table. Super dark. Kind of how you'd expect it, I guess. Really dark. I'm seeing that powdery stuff kind of filter through there. There we go. That looks better on the back. Let's get a little more. This one, man, I don't. This is one I definitely don't want to get my finger on my fingers because it's so dark. I feel like this one would stain for like a long time. And we'll get. Well, all right. We'll, we'll. It looks a lot darker, but we'll have to let it dry and then see. Up is Nasdreg Yellow. I used this for the wings on the dragon, but also for this griffin, and I really like this one. I did leave uh, the bottom of the wings still in the really nice white, so we can kind of get a difference of the uh, the type of contrast, uh, you know, the undercoat that I'm putting this on, just to see what kind of difference it will make. Uh, and let's go ahead, and we're going to do a bear. There are some bears in Joan of Arc, and see what kind of difference this makes here. I don't know if it'll make that much difference here because that was already real thick, you know, a darker color and the bears are already kind of in the same, like it's almost, so it's, it feels like it'll be a more natural fit. This one I definitely want to put on real thick too. Looks cool. All right, I'll put this on and then we'll let this one dry and then compare it. All right, so I've gone and let them dry and you can see uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between the bear uh, on, and the gray and the uh, white for the griffin. Um, so the yellow, kind of kind of similar um, for our darker blue, or the talisar blue. 
Um, also not a tremendous amount of difference. Very much the same effect. I think, I feel like it's a little darker, but not, not a terrible amount. Uh, one, one thing that is kind of interesting though, is you see I have like this little point of white that kind of snuck through there and that can happen with these like the way that they pool it's funny I, I, I've seen this a cut in a couple of times you you think it's covering everything but you see like these little specks of white when you're done so like you want to I'm doing them very very quickly uh, and I think that's a risk you might take when you're doing stuff very quick um, now this one I know I'm noticing a big big difference uh, and this is the uh, the aether aethermatic blue um, this one has, it's taken on, since the base is almost a hint of yellow, since it's a light blue, it's almost started to become a hint of a green, like combining like just traces of yellow with that light blue has, uh, you know, almost had a greening effect come through, which is kind of interesting. So there we go. There's a little bit of a difference there. So I, I feel like, um, uh, my guess is that like the lighter colors are, are the difference would be a little more noticeable. Here we go with, with, this was with our Magos purple. Um, not a super huge difference. A little bit. See, like there's some spots that on the horn that, that where the, where it kind of seeped through or where I, you know, where I missed. And it's just funny because like, a, you know, I just did it real quick, but like some parts, like the pooling is just weird. It looks like it covers everywhere. You see a little part there on the wing too. Uh, when you're just applying the stuff really quick. Don't get too sloppy because it's, it does seem like it goes on really, really quick. But you'll, you'll see, you see there's parts where you can just miss. Uh, now let's check the Apothecary White. This one here was our uh, our statue from the, on the white base. And here's our knight with the gray. Um, yeah, the, honestly, Apothecary White looks just gray to me. Like a thin gray because I can still see the, the bone showing through on this. I do not like Apothecary White. Sam, I am. All right, so now that we've looked at those, we have a couple of, I got a couple of new colors too. So let's take a look at some darker ones. We've got uh, Dark Angels Green, and we've got um, Griff Charger Gray, which this one should look pretty good on the darker. And then I've got Wildwood, which is like a dark brown according to the, the image. All right, so the first one I'm going to do is Griff Charger Gray, and I'm going to apply this to this uh, knight mini here. He's like a mounted, looks like a king. I'm using an older brush here, but it's still clean. It's just an older, some of the older brushes, like when I'm applying stuff like sloppy, I don't mind as much. And this one is definitely got a, a gray look to it. Kind of like that, and I, th I think if I'm doing a whole bunch of knights or armored figures, I might do a lot of armor in this. The gray seems like it's taking fairly well. And this is a darker one, but I also, you know, with the gray, I was thinking, you know, this, it, it feels also like it's pretty thin at the same time, but you kind of, you kind of have to be, to be gray. Think, yeah, you don't want it to be straight up black. Even like even null oil is pretty thin, right? Yeah. We'll let this one dry and see how that one looks. Well, I'll get get a little thicker on there. All right. Next up is Dark Angels Green, and we're gonna be putting it on this farmer here. He's not the maybe the best detailed mini, but I could see farmers being in green. Oh, that's dark. It's really dark. Wow, that's darker than I expected. Wow, I'm gonna have to put that on real thick. The chalkiness of this base uh, is sucking up a lot of the paint too. How is that even a contrast? That's just like straight up black. I might have to use this on a bigger miniature. Yeah, there is definitely some green in there, but that's crazy dark. Well, I'll, I'll try it on something bigger. All right, we're gonna try that same contrast green on this werewolf here. He's a little bigger and he's got a lot more definition to him. Let's we'll see if we can get that to pool and look a little different. And I know what you're thinking, why would you make a werewolf green? I'm like, well, there's a good reason for that. There's regular wolves in this game 
And I'll make the werewolf stand out from them. Plus, I mean, maybe he's been... Oh, see, I got it on my finger. That's going to be... That's going to stain. Even, even on a bigger mini, like, this is still a really, really dark green. Wow. You can see, like, there's some parts where it's kind of shining through a little bit on the muscle. We'll see how it dries, too, because this is... This is a super, super dark... Color. There we go. Ooh. Boy, oh boy. I'm even going to do the stone that he's on a little bit there, too. I'm just trying to blanket. I'm just trying to coat him in it. I think this one will dry a little bit less black and a little bit more green. We'll have to see. All right, next up we're going to do contrast wild wood. And we're going to put that on this, uh, you know, the Oregon Trail right here. You know, the, the, the book. Buggy. Uh, also, uh, while I do this, you know, I want to kick off another round of the giveaway right now. And so that's going to be for an Amazon $25 gift card. Uh, and all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos to enter to win that. And that'll run for about two weeks. And then I'll announce the uh, winner at the uh, end of a video. So yeah, make sure you uh, enter to win that. I run these type of giveaways all the time. One just ended a few days ago. So make sure you watch the videos. Oh, this is going on real dark. Oh, that's a good looking wood though, man. That looks looks nice. I don't I don't really to be honest, I don't know if I see a whole lot of contrast with this because it's goodness, it's just all dark. I did definitely try to get some darker colors this time around. Maybe I mean I can I can put it on a little thinner like that. You can see. It's a little bit thinner, of course, but you can't you put it on too thin, you're gonna miss spots like that. So no, no, I'm going to stick with the plan and being even and consistent here is applying it thick and being very generous in our applications of this stuff because that's how I'm doing it on the lighter colors. That's how I got to do it on the darker colors too. Otherwise, we won't have a, a fair kind of test, you know. I think I'm just going to do the buggy right now. I might do the ox a different color at, a, at another point. But the buggy is all wood and barrels and stuff, so it makes sense. But there's, boy, there's a whole lot of surfaces in here to get. And I'll say this, this paint, and I'm getting it all over my hands too, um, this paint is, while it is a really watered down and, and very, you know, made to flow into the, the cracks, it doesn't flow as much as you'd think. And that's a blessing and a curse. I mean, it's a good thing because it doesn't drip all over the table and drip into places you don't want. But like, boy, it's like sometimes when you, you really want it to drip into a certain area that you can't quite hit all that well, it doesn't. And I'm like, oh, please go in there. Please go in there. And it just doesn't want to. And I'm like, oh. I guess those are the times where you could opt to water it down a little bit if you really wanted to. But honestly, I feel like if I was going to water it down, I'd just use normal paints. You know? Because these were expensive, man. These are twice, almost twice as much as normal Citadel paints. And Citadel paints are already on the expensive side. And the pots, like, you know, oh God, I got stuff all over the base, right? Good thing I'm not super concerned with bases right now. All right, I can already see some of the brown kind of starting to show through. But yeah, I couldn't quite get all the way in there, but uh, yeah, that'll probably be good enough. All right, we're going to let this one dry now and probably go wash my hands and then come back and check the other the new colors. All right, so here we've let everything dry and we've got our wild wood and this does look pretty good. Again, you know, a single spot kind of or a couple of single spots Still kind of leaked through. Some uh, sometimes it's like the pooling clumps up, almost like in a like 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 a, a Jello pudding pop, and then just seeps back, and it's deceiving. So again, I did these pretty quickly though, but that's not too bad. Uh, now the Dark Angels Green came out real real dark, uh, and and I think this one might have been better to do over like a whiter, a brighter prime. Uh, yeah, it is still green. Didn't look good on the little guy. But it's definitely green still. But, uh, yeah, it's really, really dark green. Pretty cool, though. I'm all right with that. 
Uh, my favorite with the the Wraith Bone, I think, is the uh, the Contrast Griff Charger Gray, because this one looks actually fairly decent, especially for the purposes of kind of quick painting a lot of minis just to bring out the details. So yeah, this has been Wraith Bone Contrast Undercoat, kind of how it works with some of these. And additionally, we've got all of these right here. Uh, you know, the ones that we did before, you know, the, just the, the difference on uh, on which ones kind of look better with the Wraithbone undercoat as opposed to which ones don't. And I think the consensus is uh, the lighter ones definitely do, especially this, this guy who took on almost a greenish hue as compared to his whiter painted friend here. Uh, the lighter colors are, sometimes mesh a little bit, especially the light blues are going to look pretty cool on, with a Wraithbone. Uh, but I think the more the really light ones like this one looks really good and the worst the worst of all was this apothecary white which was just like nothing it's like you might, as, you might as well just pour it down the drain really really bad stuff all right guys that's all I've got for you today I want to thank you all so much for watching if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up let me know what you think down in the comments below don't forget to check out crabock.com you can check me out on Twitter and Facebook as well I will often post uh, pictures of like final painting projects. There's a lot of pictures of that dragon up there on Facebook right now. And uh, I'll probably be posting more. I also will do some on my website. You can check out crabock.com or you can hop in my Discord and talk there. Don't forget to click that little bell for alerts so you don't miss out on new videos when they come out. And you want to stay tuned uh, to enter to win that giveaway. Make sure you click the subscribe button and leave a comment. Let me know what color is your favorite out of all of these. And which one do you think I should try next that I haven't already? So it's pretty fun. I got a lot more minis to paint. I'll probably end up doing most of them in this Griff Charger Gray, which I think is one of my favorite ones so far. Very cool stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and big thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are awesome. And as always, have a great day.